hello guys and welcome back i think this is the fourth video we have in this chapter we're looking at forms of integration okay if you've not watched the last um, videos the last set of videos i will suggest you go ahead and see them before you come to this one now in this video we are going to be starting out uh, in the last video actually this is what we treated we treated an integration of this nature we say whenever you integrate a fraction this is what you call a fraction then whenever you integrate a fraction of this nature that what you're going to get for the fact that when you differentiate the denominator you're going to get the numerator that your answer to this is simply the log of the denominator which is usually expressed in this form lean of x this is actually called a natural logarithm okay of course this is indefinite integral so you can go ahead and put a plus c here which is always meant to be there in indefinite integral so you can add those things in so this was what, this is what we did in the last class um the last set of videos we talked about we looked at a lot of examples on this um so now in this video we are going to be starting out with what about if what we have is a product we have a product of this nature you have um two functions multiplying but the issue here is this if you look at this one i have here it's saying if you differentiate what you have here just what you have in this bracket if you differentiate this you're going to get what is outside so whenever you differentiate this and you get this as your result that your answer to this integral you don't have to go through the process that the answer to this integral is simply you taking what you have here increasing the power by one you can see from power of n now we have power of n plus one then use that same power which is n plus one to divide the old fraction okay then as usual you have your plus c because this is um indefinite integral so based on this now um if we go ahead to look at some examples we have this as an example uh, let's say you're asked to integrate this so the first thing you have to look at is this is actually a product it is a product of 2x plus 1 and x squared plus x all raised to power 4. so whenever you have two products you always try to it's not okay not always actually but that should be your first um, approach try to look out for the one that is having a power because there are some cases you bump into and then you don't have to look at the one that is having a power so you just need to have that intuition and the way that intuition will come is when you solve different questions so you have to be going ahead to be solving questions on this so once you solve different kinds of questions not just the kind of questions i'm going to give to you um you see things that uh, once you look at it you know this should be the one you take to be um the one to test for and so on so you understand the vibe right so yeah i'm going to differentiate this if i differentiate x squared plus one now please take note i'm saying if i differentiate x squared plus x if i differentiate x squared plus x what i'm going to get will be 2x um plus one right so you can see 2x plus one is what i have in this bracket for the fact that what I have in this bracket is the derivative of what I have here, what I'm going to do is to take this power, this power is n, increase the power by 1 according to the formula we had, then divide by that new power. So what I mean by that is I'll take just this thing I have here, increase the power by 1, so you can see the power becomes 5 instead of 4, then I'm dividing by that new power which now still becomes 5. And that's all guys, you're done okay you're done with it um let's see another example another example is you having 3x square and still look at this if you differentiate what you have here what you're going to get is i think um 3x square you're going to get 3x square and 3x square is what is outside so for the fact that if i differentiate this i'm getting what is outside i'm going to pick the power which is n here increase the power by one if you increase the power by one you're going to get minus one so this is what I have. The power is now minus 1. Divide by that same power which is minus 1 plus c. You can rearrange this a bit, just a tiny little bit. Take this minus sign to the top. And then you have something like this. Okay, you can take the minus sign here. And this guy, according to indices, becomes 1 over x cubed plus 100. So that's why I have this as the final result. Okay. Um, so you can see they are quite simple. Now, if you don't know about the standards these standards are not they are not actually general there are some questions you bump into you can work with these standards we're looking at or these um, forms we're looking at that's why we now have some other things you could do there are some other substitutions that could actually work out for you but just understand this so that when you when you see the question this could work if it's going to work no need to go through those other processes like um, integration by substitution and the rest so that you meet those ones 
and we are also going to look at them so let's see another example this time we have a, um, a trick fun or we have trick functions multiplying so the two functions we have they are cos x and sin x okay so now we can see none of them is having a power so we don't actually say okay let's go for this one and let's go so since none of them is having a power you can decide to use this cos x or you can decide to use other one sin x uh, but for the sake of simplicity and what we are explaining right now i'm going to use um sin x as my f of x so take note here you can also use cos x as f of x it's going to work out but you have to do something extra for it to work out fine i don't want to do that extra um, that's why I'm going to use sin x. So if I use sin x, now if you differentiate sin x, if I differentiate this, uh, you accept that whenever I differentiate sin, what you're going to get is cos. So if I differentiate sin x, I will get cos x. For the fact that I'm getting cos x when I differentiate sin x, is I'm going to assume that sin x is having a power of 1. So n here becomes 1. Since sin x is having a power of 1, I can increase the power by 1, which will now make it a power of 2, then divide by that same power. And if I take this to another form, I'm going to have sin square x all over 2, which is actually the form you should have your answer in. Okay? Um, I think we have another one. We have tan x x square x. Now, this is the reason I told you that you don't always look out for the power, the one with the power to be your f of it. Because if you look at this very well, I have tan x. I have sex square x and we know to where that sex square x um, can actually be written in the form um, I think sec x don't mind my writing sex x all squared so this sex square x can be written in this form for the fact that it can be written in this form sec x this is terrible man okay so <laughs> I'm even making it worse so for the fact that it can be written in this form sec x all squared I might be tempted to say okay let this be our f of x but the issue now is this, if you differentiate sec x, you're not going to get tan x. In fact, if you differentiate sec x, what you're going to get to be sec x, let's see if this time around I'll write it correctly, sec x. What you're going to get is sec x, and that is tan x, however you see it, just take it as tan x. So, if I differentiate sec x, I'm going to get sec x tan x. So, you can see the derivative of um, this. The derivative of um, what I have here is not actually giving birth to this. Okay, it's not giving birth to the tan x I have here. So I shouldn't take sec x to be the term to work with. So the question is if I'm not taking sec x to be the term to work with, what should I now take to be the term? Simple. Use tan x. Okay? So now if I differentiate tan x, what will I get? If we differentiate tan x, we are going to get sec square x. For the fact that if we differentiate tan x, we we'll get sec square x. Automatically, this one becomes a f of x. So it's assumed that f of x here is having a power of 1. So this is our n. And since it's having a power of 1, we increment the power by 1. From 1, it becomes 2. We divide by that same power. So we have tan x raised to the power of 2 all over 2 plus c. And which can be expressed in its form and that's correct now talking about this it just occurred to me that there's another method you can actually use to solve this you see the reason i don't like preparing slides because um, now i can't i can't go um all awesome on this if i try to try if i try to write this on the screen now my handwriting will be like um, that of something you can't think of um, because i'm not actually using a pen i'm using my touch pads to do this write up that's why it's looking this ugly um hopefully in the future i'm going to get a, a good writing pad to be working with so that i won't have to be making slides we just pick up and then we start um, writing as we go and that's going to be more awesome you're going to like that more uh, because we're going to look at some lovely things but yeah i'm trying to prepare slides and it's um, it's boring for me but all the same you, you can get the concept there's another way we can solve this uh, the other way we can solve this is to split sec x okay so i'm going to call this guy to be i'm going to make it tan x um, make this one sec x and also have another sec x so now if i differentiate sec x i'm going to get sec x tan x for that reason your solution is now going to look like um, sec x right sec x all squared 
all over 2 then plus C I think that is it yes and this answer and this answer they are generally the same thing okay if you want me to show you that they're the same thing um, I'm not going to show you here <laughs> okay but it's very simple this is what you're going to do if you want to show that these two things are the same thing all you need to do is um, simplify sex square x sex square x is um, the same thing as 1 plus tan square x so if you put in place of sex square you put 1 plus tan square you simplify it um, you're going to get this because all the constants can be collected and say called c um, shut me up if you really don't get the gist and then um, I'll show you how it's done okay okay so that's it that's what we have I think for this video yeah that's all we have for this video um, so I'm going to see you guys in the next um, video where we are going to be looking at a couple of more examples okay see you then bye bye